Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I am gonna reveal what is the car behind the pixels. So in a recent video, we shared that we were moving on Yogi, who was our 2017 Jeep Cherokee. And we were replacing it with something else interesting. And we didn't move Yogi on because we'd fell out of love with Yogi. It was changing circumstances, plus the desire to own this special vehicle as well. We gave you some clues and two people got it right, but the vast majority of people were way off base, which was kind of my intention because the clues I gave you, plus the little soundtrack, were this is a car which is standard, has a boost gauge, a standard has a G recorder, as in G-Force, and then the soundtrack of the vehicle were all meant to mislead you. And it did that admirably. I can add to that just before I reveal by saying, this is a car of its own race series, has two intercoolers. And although its basis is a rather more mundane car, it carries the name of a tuning house and nowhere on it is the name of the base vehicle's manufacturer. Thank you for your, all your guesses, particularly uh, like the fact that it was mistaken for um, three different American V8s, um, a couple of high-performance BMWs, several Porsches, an Audi RS3 and RS4, but there are lots of other interesting guesses in there. What is the vehicle? It's an Arbath 595 called Snoopy. Now, some of you will be straight away saying, but John, that's a Fiat 500, surely? And yes, that's the base vehicle. That's what this is developed from. What is an Arbath 595? Well, a bath, if you're unfamiliar, is a tuning house. And as AMG is to Mercedes, so our bath is to Fiat. And our bath are a very old tuning house, famous for building racing cars and tuning production cars. And they do a range of vehicles based on Fiat products. In earlier years, they would actually build the car at a separate plant. These days they have our bath areas within Fiat factories and our bath technicians, etc., etc. So it's kind of like way Honda make Mugen vehicles and Type R engines. There's sort of separate people and places where the our bath vehicles are finished off. But actually, it doesn't share that much of the important stuff with its Fiat 500 siblings. Its shell is exactly as a Fiat 500, but the nose clip, nose molding is entirely different and is pushed a lot further forward in order to accommodate the larger engine and intercoolers. The side bodywork has these rather large skirts to widen the bodywork at the back so that the wheels which now reach right out into the wheel arches aren't exposed at their front edges. At the back the rear lower bodywork is again entirely different, wider, lower, with actual ducts and vents in the 
sides to allow air from the brakes to get out. And this sort of rear under tray come splitter looking effect on the back to cover up the totally different exhaust system and allow access for the big beefy exhaust pipes. There is also a large spoiler over the rear window. As I said at the beginning, nowhere on the vehicle is it badged as a Fiat. Everything is our bath, right down to the centre screen or sat nav or infotainment system, lighting up to show the our bath logos. 500 does appear on the boot lid and on the dashboard but that's as close as we get to a reference. At the front we have these rather large intakes which lead to intercoolers whose air exits around the back and an additional grill just above the number plate. Bigger, if not very pretty, vented disc brakes all round. And the standard Fiat springs and dampers have been done away with. And she rides on quite clever Coney dampers and lowered springs. Front ground clearance is actually a little bit of an issue. It doesn't look too bad in these shots, but because there's quite an overhang, the standard Fiat 500 tucks under an awful lot more at the front. Combined with the lower height means that the bottom front edge, what you might call a splitter, um, can scrape on driveways if they're a little steep. Inside, there's a similar sort of message. Yes, it still has the superstructure of the Fiat 500, but everything's been changed from the minor and cosmetics, such as the trim plates on the sills, down to the seats are entirely different to those used in the 500 models. Front and rear, we've got ours covered up because dog, white dog, black seats <laughs> don't go together. We have the our bath flat bottom steering wheel, alloy pedals, unique gear stick knobs with quick shift. By our bath standards, the exhaust system is relatively well silenced on Snoopy, as she is, as I said, a 595, but still produces a really interesting little bark and can easily be upgraded to the superior exhaust systems of the higher models. the bonnet is obviously where one of the bigger changes occurs and this is a 1.4 turbocharged intercooled twin cam T-Jet unit. It's actually one of the older Fiat designed engines. That engine doesn't exist in any of the 500s turbocharged or otherwise. Now this car is a, an Arbaf 595 and in Arbaf parlance that makes it one up from the bottom of their range. So this is a quick car that handles very well but by no means a rocket ship in the same way as some of the 695s and special editions. 
So Snoopy has 146 horsepower. She weighs more or less one ton, giving her a good power to weight ratio. And she'll do 0 to 60 real world in the low sevens. The handling is amazing. And if you choose to watch any of our bath racing, you will know that these things will drive on two wheels very happily. They really hang on. A little stiff for some people's taste, it has to be said, both in terms of ride comfort, damping, and the seats. But realistically, if you're looking at our bath, you are looking for entertainment more than you are a comfortable little shopping car. In terms of practicality, it's not actually as much of a compromise as you might imagine. Excuse the dog's bed. And we have got the rear seat covered up. But back here is sufficient space for two adults to sit. I would say comfortably, with a raised eyebrow at the end of it. Um, your head doesn't hit the ceiling if you're 5'10 like me. Your knees will be spread, let's say in the back with a seat back for a 5'10 person in the front. But it's not that bad. And if somebody says we need to go 20 miles, I wouldn't hesitate at jumping in the back. Not a long distance car for adults though. Brilliant for kids or dogs in our case. And the boot, whilst obviously it's gonna be small, is not bad for a small car. Just to give context, there is five litres of engine oil. This is not bad. And the seats fold down flat to make it into a little van. It also has the bonus of having, in my opinion, the world's most ridiculous parcel shelf. Yeah, somebody actually made that. <laughs> maximize the space you could reconfigure the boot because there is a spare wheel well it's occupied in ours with foam for um, a compressor and some tire repair kit and the normal polystyrene block but you could remove that retrim the boot and give yourself an actually very very reasonable boot i should say at this stage that these cars can be specified with or without the arbaf stripe down the side now we got Snoopy as a second hand vehicle, 2017. She's only done um, 16,500 miles and she's practically mint condition. But we chose the vehicle based on condition and spec and it didn't have the stripe, which is something we wanted. So that's something we've added ourselves. If you specify it from the factory, it's got a, um, let's say hideous, extras cost. If you buy a genuine Arbaf stripe from a bath, that will cost you £85 for the pleasure of installing for yourself. We bought a pattern one, exact copy to be fair, uh, very good quality though, at £35 plus a bit of postage and fitted it ourselves and it is indistinguishable from Arbaf's. It's possible to specify painted calipers and whilst I don't necessarily feel the need for a uh, jazzy coloured caliper, um, these do look particularly tatty because we've got these rather open scorpion wheels. Um, so they're going to get painted up as per one of the options when this car was new anyway. 
So that is our new car. Now we should address the question of why? First and foremost, we really like these and just felt the need to own one. Next, because the Jeep was primarily Joe, my wife's transport, and her traveling was getting more and more reduced by circumstances, it seemed a little excessive to have the Jeep as her runaround. Don't get me wrong, I love the Jeep too and happily used it for work, but it felt a little excessive. And then the real kicker was that Ruby, our A-Class motorhome, Rapido 9090F, is something we're getting a lot of use and joy out of. And I'm using this a lot for work and our intent is to do more and more traveling with her. And one of the issues, if you like, of having a large, and I've got to say by European standards, large-ish motorhome is traveling around sightseeing and getting to little places once you've trunk road to a campsite can be quite challenging. Access is not brilliant to a lot of small villages and towns in the UK with a vehicle of this sort of size. And with this degree of overhang at the back, meaning that you've got to consider swinging the tail out and knocking over stone walls and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Snoopy converted to be an A-frame tow car or towed as they are called quite commonly. What does that mean? Well, it's quite interesting, quite exciting, if I'm honest. It's something that I feel I could take on myself or I'm not going to because it needs to be certified to be properly legal in as many places as possible. So the car is going to be modified to incorporate changes in the crash member behind this bumper, such that it will have two quarter turn fixings under plastic covers that can be plugged in and then a towing A-frame attached. And that will then go onto the tow bar of Ruby the Rapido. The car will steer itself at that point because of the amount of caster on the front swivels it means it'll follow quite nicely steering itself as long as the steering lock is turned off. Then to make it really compliant, because I know a lot of you are going to jump up and down and say, ah, A-frame tow cars aren't actually legal. You've got to do this, you've got to do that. No, no, don't worry. We're going the whole hog. So what will also be installed inside the vehicle is a vacuum pump to work the servo for the brakes, a piston also running off that vacuum pump, which can depress the brake pedal. It'll actually pull it towards the bulkhead using cables, uh, an accelerometer, and also a brake light detector plugged into the motor caravan. Such that if the vehicle, this one, detects deceleration over a certain amount, it will apply its own brakes and it's a fully modulated system. So, you know, more or less, depending on what's required to stop it catching up with the motor caravan and essentially keep smooth braking. Also be an electrical connector on the front of the car, hidden away, which will enable the rear lights on Snoopy to act as a mirror of those on Ruby. And there'll be a breakaway cable poking through the grill, which you'll uh, pull out, attached to the back of Ruby, meaning that if the unthinkable happened 
and the whole system broke down or the A-frame broke or the coupling became detached, that would actually put on all the brakes locked on on Snoopy. So that is a fully compliant system, meaning that the vehicle, you're not raising question marks about are you allowed to tow a car in that way on the roads anywhere it at that stage becomes a four-wheeled fully braked trailer and my driving license allows me to drive a rather heavy motor caravan with a rather heavy trailer that's fully braked and light lighted so um yeah some people call it flat towing i.e the vehicle is on the ground. So, Snoopy will become a toad and everything that's on show will fold up rather neatly and end up popped in the boot. That's something we've booked the vehicle in for. I'll share some more info on that at a later date. It's rather expensive, but we are going the full Monty on it. So that is the new car in the fleet. And we'll be sharing some more bits and pieces on her rather soon. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.